In this video, we'll look at some more advanced pattern building as well as other cool features and consequence. Let's start with the performance section. The octave sequencer lets you shift individual notes up one or two octaves. Click again to reset for no transposition. To shift a series of steps, click how much octave transposition you want, then click and drag. Right click to reset. You can edit all performance sequencer step elements in this way. The mode sequencer determines how chords are played back, either as block chords, which is default, or as rising or falling arpeggios. The note repeat arp mode plays the last note played by the previous step. If the previous step was in chord mode, then it plays the lowest note. Each of the three instruments can be assigned to play either with all trigger modes, only with the chord mode, or only with the arp modes. This is a great way to develop patterns with lots of sonic variety. The ARP mode, restart, and shift controls on the left side of the performance sequencer provide even more control over trigger modes. Check out the section on the mode sequencer in the manual for more information. The trigger sequencer determines how often a step is triggered. The default and what you'd expect is that each step is played once. But by clicking, you can increase this up to four triggers per step. This is effective in slower tempos and for increasing rhythmic diversity. Glide is a well-known synth feature for giving life to melodic lines. It is a sort of glissando or slide up or down to the first note of the step depending on the distance from the last note played. Glide only works with ARP triggers, not with the chord trigger. Ties let you create rhythms by spanning over multiple steps. When a tie is activated, there is no re-triggering, even to zero amplitude, on that step. Instead, the note is held over from the previous step. When several steps are tied together, the note is the length of all consecutive steps combined. This can be very effective with slow amplitude envelope settings. The tie instrument selector determines which of the three instruments is affected by time. You can also tie the filter for creating long sweeps. The modulation section is actually five sequencers in one. With it, you can store and recall patterns for controlling parameters from the instruments, the filter, and the effects. Each of the five patterns can control one parameter in the corresponding module, such as filter cutoff, an instrument pan, another instrument's volume, and the chorus amount. Choose the modulation targets with the drop-down menu or the arrows. The effects section is clean, simple, and effective. Most of the modules should be self-explanatory, but there's one particularly interesting effect to check out. Reverse, which reverses sound in real time. The length of the reversed sound is set by size, giving a readout in note length. The powerful filter module has lots of sound-shaping possibilities. It can operate in poly mode, where each voice triggers its own filter envelope, or mono mode, where each note triggers the filter envelope for all voices at once. To reduce CPU load, try switching to mono. The three buttons at the top switch the filter on or off individually for any or all of the three instruments. Around the low cut knob are the filter type selectors, high, low, and bandpass, plus comb and notch. Like instrument triggering, you can set the filter to trigger for all steps, or for either just chord steps, or just ARP steps. For creating long sweeps, you can set the filter to trigger after a certain number of steps ranging from 2 to 8. Try using the LR button to get nice stereo filter sweep effects. For an old, worn-out, analog circuit sound, turn up H. 
Along with cutoff, the peak control determines the amount of sweep depending on the ADSR filter envelope parameter settings. Finally, the master section is more than just master volume. For example, you can quickly capture ideas with the built-in audio recorder. Set the length of the recording in bars. In play mode, the recording begins as soon as consequence starts. With MIDI, recording will occur as long as a MIDI note is held. Manual starts the recording as soon as you hit the record button. Because the audio information is stored temporarily in your computer's RAM, anything recorded without saving will be lost when you shut consequence down. Click on Save to save to disk. The master section also comes with a built-in attack release envelope, which you can think of as a fade in and fade out when starting and stopping consequence. You can clearly hear this when we turn the knobs all the way up to their maximum settings. You can also transpose your entire pattern up or down in half steps and fine tune it in case you need to tune to another instrument in your host environment or during a live performance. The compressor is on the left part of the master section. Cranking up compression and turning up the side chained kick drum gives your pattern a lively pumping sound. More subtle settings can simply bring out quieter sounds. Maybe you just asked, what kick drum? Normally, the kick drum is not routed to the main output, but used simply as a side chain source for the compressor. That's why the mute button is on by default. But to hear how your sequence will sound when framed into a quarter note beat, just unmute. This is great for giving yourself a framework while building sequences. If you don't want the side chaining, just turn the volume all the way down. You can also get away from your mouse and tweak parameters with your MIDI controller equipment. Setting things up is dead easy. Just right click on a knob or fader and choose MIDI Learn. Wiggle a controller knob or fader on your hardware and you're done. Now you should stop watching and start making some music. Thanks for your attention.